Hello, hello, hello to each and every one of you. This is Prophetess Shalanda, a.k.a. The Inspirational Treasure, and guess what? I am on the radio. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to everybody out there in Internet radio world, across all platforms, uh, wherever you are listening to us, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on Spreaker, whether it's on Spotify, whether or not it is on iHeart, wherever it is, we are so glad that you are joining us tonight, and we are glad that you decided tonight to be a part of this experience, because that is what it's about to be. Uh, We have an amazing show for you tonight. We have some amazing guests. We have... um, now, it's just going to be bananas. Um, I have chosen you guys to call Third Tuesdays my panel Tuesdays, my panel Tuesdays. So, you know, normally throughout the month I'm going to have an a interview because I love to spotlight people who I'm interviewing um, where they don't just have, you know, a few minutes here, a few minutes there, but we can really dialogue, you know, and uh, and build something so they can really share who they are with you. But on these uh, Tuesdays, on the third Tuesday, y'all going to have to um, hold me to it. So if you see a, a different flyer and you like, hey, 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 we need some um, intensity, some some panel discussion on this third Tuesday. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a panel. And this week right here, uh, I had to start it off with a bang. And so tonight I'm going to be joined by some phenomenal sisters. And y'all have heard most of them. I think y'all probably heard all of them except for one who I am so excited to have with us tonight because she's always busy on a Tuesday, but we are so happy to have her. So y'all know what we do before we actually jump into any interviews, any producer's picks, host picks, he inspires, um, uh, business blast, whatever we do on this platform. We have got to usher in our Father and let him know that he is welcome here. Amen. So, Father, we give you glory. Hallelujah. We thank you right now for who you are. God, we just adore you. We matter magnify you. We lift you. Glory to God. We ask now, Father, that you would begin to just do what only you can do in this time that we share uh, with those that are listening. God, whatever you want them to hear, whatever it is that you want to penetrate their soul, God, even us, hallelujah. If you want to penetrate us on another level, God, we welcome it tonight, and we ask that you would just make your, your, your space with us, inhabit these praises that we are offering up, hallelujah, with our gifts, God, with our time, with our talents. We offer it up to you, and we pray that you would take it as an offering. God, we just love you so very much. We honor you, and we thank you for who you are, and we ask that you would just continuously bless your children over and over and over again. Bless all of those who we are a part of this this space with, our Internet families. We thank you, Father, for Jerry Royce, and we thank you for uh, the Internet sisters and brothers who share this space that are across the airwaves er everywhere trying to give motivation and inspiration and encouragement to the body. We just give you glory for them, God. We pray increase and overflow in the mighty name of Jesus. We do pray and bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Y'all, I feel so, so like, so let me tell you guys, and y'all, I'm, um, actually, I think I'm going to, uh, our health chat is going to come about uh, five whole minutes early, so in about three minutes. So give me three minutes because I don't want to take away too much time for our, from our panel tonight. Um, my He Inspires is a very special guest, and uh, so I'm, we're, we're looking for a great show, but I want to let you guys know um, why tonight I feel so amazing um, and what inspired the panel. First of all, to be really transparent, I needed some of my sisters with me. I needed some strength behind me because I'm still recouping from not feeling well. And so I haven't just been not feeling well, you know, uh, this past year and a half. I've actually been doing pretty, pretty well as far as the fibromyalgia is concerned. So I haven't had a bout like this in a very long time. And so this is one of the ones that had me just laid up for like a week and a half or a little bit over a week. And, um, and so I'm still getting my strength back. And so I was just laying here. I was like, you know, I, I don't want to not be on tonight. I don't want to not share this space because this also gives gives me energy, but I also don't just want to um, expend 
every bit of energy I have. I want to still use wisdom. I said, I think I'm going to, like, you know, have my sisters come on and just dialogue with me. And then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit began to deal with me about this particular Tuesday and making it a time uh, where other people can come on and really just shoot the breeze with me. Um, And I think next month I'm going to probably do a male panel, so y'all get ready for that. But I needed their strength. I needed their 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 um, their energy. I needed their love uh, to be able to surround me. And so I sent out a message, and uh, and they responded. Um, and the ones that could not come, uh, their hearts were still here. And so I wanted to point out two things. One, uh, the energy behind the people who you allow in your circle. If you do not feel the push or the strength of their hands at any time in your relationship, then you need to be able to reevaluate where everybody belongs. And let me clarify, not everybody that comes into your life is going to be your strength. They're not going to be the ones to lift you up or hold your arms up. Some of those are the people that you're supposed to do it for. Some of those are the people who will never be able to give you back the same love and strength and energy um, as everybody else. Y'all excuse that alarm. Um, yeah, so you, you, you're not going to always get the same energy back from everyone else, but there is that circle of people, those people who you know are interceding for you, who you know love you, who you know um, at, a, at the drop of a dime, if they could be present, they would be present. And so that's what I wanted to do tonight. And so I'm excited about having them here. I'm excited about being live. I'm excited that I'm able to sit up in my bed and talk to you guys. I'm, I'm excited that I'm able uh, to spend this time in this moment once again and doing what God has called me to do uh, and not having to shrink back. And so I'm excited about tonight, and I hope that you're excited too. So before we go any further, before we go any further, I want to go ahead and start us off with our health chat. I know that's cool with y'all because Coach Jean, she's always giving us the business, uh, but in a good way. She is the balance that we need in this life called health and fitness and wellness. And so I want her to jump on here with us tonight so we can go ahead and get her in. And she might, if y'all are nice, stay along with us for just a little while and dialogue between the ladies. So, Coach Jean, are you here? You know I'm here, Prophetess. What's up? (laughs) Hi, how are you? You sound so much better. (laughs) Uh, I can hear the smile in your voice because I sound yes. better. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> if you I, know I, me I, so I know well, because I am sitting I here do. smiling, because you sound Jeez, so much better. <laughs> Praise I can, God. I can feel it. <laughs> when you have, uh, again, when you have those people who uh, that you just know and some people you just don't have to guess about. And so I'm extremely grateful for you all, and I'm grateful for those of you who have been checking on me all week long. I mean, listen, y'all been showing up, and it's, it's been really, really dope. Um, even when I'm, I'm not able to say a whole lot, you know, just that one to two words just kind of gauges where I am. And everybody was just like, you know, hey, this is what it is. And what what was even more amazing about it is when I know that you guys are also still trying to deal with certain things on your own, but you still rally around me, you still love on me, and that is just amazing. It is amazing, especially in this season. <laughs> and you already know. I don't even have to go into detail, but especially in this season. So um, you got a hell chat for us because I definitely am ready. I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. You know I got a health chat for the people. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, so let's get right it to it, shall we? Yes. So there's a reason why the Word of God tells us to take our requests and concerns to God. Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, so don't allow your hearts to be troubled. And about a week ago, um, I had read a, wrote a quote that said, to be at peace is to be free from anxiety and stress. Therefore, guess what? Peace is a health benefit. Why? Because it frees us from all anxiety and stress. That's good. That's good and right there. so too many times, you know, we allow people in situations, personal circumstances, or sometimes other people's circumstances and wait to rob us of our peace. And for those who tuned in into the last show um, that we were on week before last, remember, Um, We talked about focus, and yes, here that word comes up again because that's the theme this year, at least from a health and wellness perspective, 
focus and be intentional. So, you know, we talked about focus and being intentional on the last health chat. And so why don't we just learn to focus on the Prince of Peace himself, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? So here are your Coach Gene health tips for the week. Number one, set your focus on those things that bring you peace. Number one, the Prince of Peace, Jesus himself and other things that bring you peace and allows your mind to rest and be at ease. And so I'm going to give you a few examples. Take anywhere from about 15 to 30 minutes to unwind. We all got at least 15 minutes in the course of our day to where we can just sit down, chill out somewhere, be still, and unwind. I have a favorite chair in my room that I like to sit in, you know, if you want to lay down. But take a few minutes to just chillax, listen to some music, whatever genre of music that helps you to relax and clear your mind, and that will help bring you into a state of peace as well. Of course, we know to pray and meditate on the Word of God. Exercise is another methodology for bringing us peace because it helps to boost those feel-good endorphins. And this is one thing that I enjoy doing. Um, getting out in nature, like get out and walk a nature trail, do some gardening. But being out in nature is very peaceful and relaxing. And check this out. Sometimes it's not what we do, but it's what we don't do. So in other words, if it protects your peace, don't answer that phone call, don't reply to that email, don't go to that event. And I think you get the gist of what I'm saying. And so, again, I'm going to to keep harping on being focused and being intentional in everything God, first and foremost, and that which protects and preserves our health. So these are your Coach Gene health tips for the week. And for more health tips, seminars, my signature wellness programs, and if you want to participate and take the free assessment that I have on my homepage, go to my website at www.spiritofawarrior.life or shoot me an email at spiritofawarrior.life at gmail.com. And that, my friends, are your Coach Gene Health Tips for the week. Woo! Woo! Did y'all get that? So let me let me go back real quick. First of all, she said chillaxing, so I just thought I'd point that out. So we go back. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, I, when, when, uh, when Willette is with us, I always find her a hashtag, and that is your hashtag for tonight. We are going to chillax. So hashtag, feel like, you got to tell them how to spell it, though. Tell them to spell it so they can spell it right. C-H-I-L-L-A-X-I-N, chillaxing. Chillaxing with Coach Jen. Yeah. So you got to put hashtag chillaxing, and then you got to put hashtag Coach, um, yeah, uh, no, health chat with Coach Jean. Make sure we keep her highlighted, and uh, make sure y'all visit the website. Make sure y'all stay connected. Again, her testimony about health and wellness is just one all in itself, and we still have to have our time. As a matter of fact, soon, and we need to plan it for us to have our actual whole interview because the book is already out. It's already out, Amen. y'all. Spirit of a warrior. It's Amen. already out, and so we got to get we got to get this interview popping. And so hopefully it will not be long, um, but we definitely got to get her uh, here and, and 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 just doing her thing with us. Coach, you gonna stay for a while, or you gotta go? No, I'm gonna stay for a little while. You gonna stay for a little while? She's gonna be going. Hey, I'm going, hey, hey, <laughs> and I do. Now, granted, I sometimes go doze off and help below me, you know, get really comfy and chillaxed and doze off. But, hey, you know, uh-huh. and not because, you know, you know, it just brings me peace. It brings me peace. See? Amen. That's that Amen. peace again. Amen. I Amen. love that, though, too. Has, listen, we're going to hashtag that, too. Uh, inspirational Treasure on the Radio brings you peace. So y'all need to be listening and uh, really taking it all in. I thank God for the heart like that, though, you know, to where you can, you know, go with the flow and, feel it all, but yeah, so yeah, hang tight with us for a minute, because right now, what we about to do, before we invite my ladies on, y'all, we, we definitely got to get our producer speak of the week, and so we cannot go any further without bringing Jerry Royce live on, so he can give us the producer's pick of the week before we introduce our ladies. Are you ready now? I'm ready now. 
All right. Hey, we're going to go with Holy. Holy Man. Hold on one second. That was the wrong song. <laughs> Paul Breon been texting me. What's that? My bad. Uh, Welcome to the Okay. I had, some, I had a whole bunch of songs out. I, just, I tell you what, we'll just go with Dream by Re. It's pretty new. So you ready for Dream it? Dream by Re. By, by the way, Re is uh, one of our radio sisters, and so definitely check her out and, and, and um, stay up with what she has going on. Uh, so, yeah, I'm ready. Amen.
Yes, 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 and yes, y'all, that was re with Dream. So go look it up. Make sure y'all uh, keep up. First of all, she's quite beautiful, and so when you see her picture, you'll know exactly who she is. Uh, and also, she was just doing some, some big, big things, and so we're excited. Thanks, Jerry, for that producer's pick. It was dope. Yeah, I was trying to think just now whether I wanted to do something in a certain order, right, because it is a school night, right? So because it's a school night, little boys got to be to bed so they can actually go to sleep so they can actually not fall asleep in school tomorrow. <laughs> so I think that um, I think we're going to mess our flow up for just a little bit, and I want to go ahead and do our He Inspires at that school with the ladies uh, because they definitely plan to be here from – uh, our 1030 hour until, and so we're going to do that. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah, I have got to introduce this young man to you guys. And um, and I think the flexibility, the, the, the dopeness about being able to uh, kind of create your own program um, is when you can say, Hey, I'm gonna have my son come on. <laughs> I'm gonna have my sons come on because they kind of dope. Let's, 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 um, let's get them. Let's get them on here and, and, and show the world that, you know, it doesn't just take somebody that's well uh, already with the degrees and all this stuff to be able to be an inspiration. And so I'm going to um, allow him this space and time. Y'all, I'm about to <laughs> – so y'all get ready. Y'all think I giggle a lot. Y'all get ready for uh, for this giggle time. Uh, some of y'all are actually familiar with this superstar because he actually, you know, kind of got a little hit – hit little, you know, a little hit little song kind of out already at the beginning of this show. <laughs> Make them familiar with who you are. What you be saying at the beginning of the show? I go. Inspirational treasures hey. on the radio. Okay. Inspirational treasures hey. on the radio. It's on the radio. On the radio. On the radio. On the radio. I like it. <laughs> so, y'all, this is my RJ. His name is Romel Williams, and he is what, a.k.a. the music gamer and uh, some other things. So he's like a future YouTuber and a future music producer. I just asked him the other day. I was like, hey, you want to produce some music? He was like, yes, let's get it. So, you know, he's uh, in a trailblazer, and so he is going to – uh, give us our He Inspires this week. First of all, greet the people. Hello. <laughs> How you guys doing? Yeah, so um, RJ, you are going to do our He Inspires for this week, and I already kind of told you a little bit about it. But what I wanted to do was highlight uh, the males, the men. You know, I have a lot of ladies here um, on here because, of course, I'm a female and some of my friends. <laughs> I like that, right? So, but men have a voice too. And besides Jerry Royce down there holding it down, I wanted to make a space for um, our men, our males, our young uh, men to inspire us, right? And so you have a bit of inspiration for us tonight. So inspire us. Wait, no, no, no. I just missed something. Did I miss something? I think so. You think so? What am I missing? Um, hmm. You wanted to do something with me on the radio. Crazy. Yeah, I think you did. He wanted to do something. With me. Okay, y'all. So when we were around the house on a regular, a little daily, you know, we might have a little music break every now and again. You know, that just like the uh, the intro to the show, that kind of started with us just having a little music break, right, in the car. And so he just was like, "Wow, oh, we be beatboxing." So I say, "You want to beatbox on the show?" He was like, "Yeah." <laughs> so I say he was. <laughs> He want to shut his face and just maximize his opportunity. So I'm going to let him go ahead and drop a beat, and we're going to give y'all a little bit, and then he's going to give y'all a little inspiration. So, all right, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> you started it. All right, so go ahead. Give me a beat.
Oh, okay, that was dope. So you just got like a mark in history, right, with, you know, beatboxing on the radio with your mom. And so, <laughs> high five. First time I've ever done the history. Hey, <laughs> let's get it. All right, so inspire us from there. Okay, so um, today I have an inspirational quote for you guys, and it is, the key to success is to focus on goals and not obstacles. Um, to me, that means if you focus on the obstacles and not your goal, you will get farther from your goal because focusing on obstacles will most likely will most likely cause even more obstacles. We we have a goal to complete, and when when we when you all complete that goal we end up finding a new goal, like a new aspiration for us to move forward in. But some of us, they stick to what they have, and they end up moving farther in it. Mm. But see, the obstacle, that's what, that's what you got to get through. And many people have gotten through it, such as my mother. And she has made it very far. Oh. And that's one of the things that me and my siblings are very proud of. Wow. Yeah, you try. See, I didn't expect that one. Don't be trying to make me cry. We're on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, check this. You're talking about obstacles, right? And, you know, as a young man growing up in school, just you still, you're 12. Yeah. Yeah, he's 12 years old, by the way, you guys. So you're 12 years old. You have had some obstacles um, in school, kind of people pushing you backwards, making you almost feel like you were not good enough, you were not um, good enough to be their friend, good enough to be smart, all these different things. So what were um, some of the other obstacles, and how did you end up getting past those? Well, some of the obstacles that I came through, um, like last semester, was me trying to actually get to know, like to understand what I was listening to. Mm. Yeah, because most like well, all the time, there end up being um, type of equations or problems that I don't really understand. And then I say, do you have any questions? But everybody end up always having a, they also have a voice, though. And they end up making it really loud so nobody else who actually has questions to where they can't, so where they can't hear. So I end up trying to ask a question, but she never recognizes it. And then when I say I had a question, she says you should have raised your hand. Uh, yeah, so another thing about the obstacles is that, to be honest, it's the teachers. And I'm not saying that the teachers are bad. It's just that the teachers, they have to give you a very hard time. Like, they're not, like, the pers- that they're not the exact person to get along with. But I actually have three, three four of my, all my teachers I get along with, actually. But they, they still, you know, not going to always go soft. Mm. So now I I really don't blame them because you know they don't always gotta be soft for me. Hey, because if they're soft, then how are you gonna be challenged, mm-hmm. right? And so you said um, some of your obstacles is 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 uh, really thinking about what you're listening to. So there are times when we are listening to the loud voices around us, those that are screaming over us, those that are making themselves known. Um, sometimes to the point where it makes us feel like we're small and we don't have a voice, and so. How did you end up getting past that point to where now you know that you can make it and that you can do good, um, even when other people have a voice, but also knowing that it's okay for you to have one? So how did you finally get there? Um, I end up, I end up trying to look into what they actually told me, and I end up saying if anybody else needed help, and I said that. Well, actually, um, earlier today in school. Um, those those a few kids actually bumped into somebody and then that and they said I got a bodyguard and then two kids came up and they were like um two feet taller than me probably mm-hmm. um and then they said you must be with a boy I'm like nah bro it was just an accident and they said but we gonna beat you up and I'm like you ain't gonna do nothing and then I said all right and they went back to go sit down they just started talking and stuff and then there was a few other kids there was about I don't know what six and they said and they and my uh, my friend Adam. Um, I actually uh, took a surprise picture of him during the field trip. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he has said that like we should make a resistance because they said that they're going to end up trying to get us in eighth grade or seventh grade. Mm. So uh, they said let's make a resistance. And they are going to take a stand. Yeah. And well, so first of all, that's what it sounded what sounded like you just said when you said that they came to you and they said, well, you messing with our boy. You was like, nah. It's like we're going to beat you up. You was like, y'all ain't going to do nothing. 
So you took a stand. In the midst of, and, it, and, and for those who don't know you, they wouldn't know that that's a really big deal because there was a time when you really wouldn't say anything and where everybody else had to fight your battles. And so you made it through an obstacle like that to finally be able to stand up and say, nah, bro, it ain't going to go down like that because yeah. I'm taking a stance. And so y'all talking about doing resistances and all that, and that's what's up. I hear you. I hear your um, your um uh, your lingo, your 12-year-old lingo, and it's dope. <laughs> but I thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us and, and sharing your inspiration. And um, also thank you for being so dang on amazing to your mama. And um, when it is days when uh, you feel like you're at your lowest point, uh, when your 12-year-old has enough um, – He's been raised, I guess, well enough to be able to come and say, Mama, every day, if I don't do nothing else, I'm going to remind you just how beautiful you are. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. And I appreciate you. Thank you. He inspires with Romel Williams. Woo-woo. Inspirational treasure on the radio. Okay. Inspirational treasure hey. on the radio. On the radio. On the radio. On the radio. On radio. I like it. <laughs> All right. Good night, son. Yeah, so see, we got to talk to Chris. See later. Yeah, that was Romel Williams. That was my, my actual blood baby around here, um, giving us a he inspires for this week. And um, I must say, I, I enjoyed that very, very, very much. <laughs> So, y'all, I'm ready. I'm ready for the ladies. Are y'all ready for the ladies? Well, whether you're ready or not, here they come. Ladies, let me hear y'all. What it do, boo? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Woo! Y'all giving me life right now. Apostle, you said, did you say something, Apostle Marilyn? Are you off mute? I said, hey, hey, hey. Okay, I thought it was you. I thought it was you. I thought it was you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Prophet Tanya, are you here? I am live and in living color. She's live and in living color. Uh, <laughs> Prophet Brandy, I think I heard you. Didn't I hear you? Present and accounted for, my dear. Present and accounted for. I heard Angela. Prophet Angela is in the building, y'all. And I listen, I'm going to get into that in a second. Hey. Hey. Ms. Jean decided to stay with us. Prophet Ebony, are you here? I'm here. Ah! Y'all listen, so I'm super amped. And um, I'm going to need all of them to get super amped, too, because I feel like they might want to go to sleep on me, but don't. Don't go to sleep on me because tonight is going to be fine, and I'm excited to have you all here. So let me introduce real quick. So Apostle Marilyn E. Porter, most of you guys already know her because she's been present here a few times, um, but definitely uh, one of the sound voices in my world, and so I'm excited to have her on. Apostle Marilyn, greet the people. Hey, 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 everybody. Um, it, it, it is a late night for me. For those of you who don't know, I turned 50. And so since I turned 50, I try to go to bed a little earlier. <laughs> but I am excited. It's always a pleasure to be um, in the midst. And so um, you've already told them who I am. I am Marilyn E. Porter. And um, I always tell people my mama name, my parents branded me at birth, so I am M.E. Porter. Um, I love the Lord. I love his people. My heart is surrendered, and I'm ready for whatever 2020 is about to bring. Woo, woo. And it's bringing some stuff. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother interview all by itself. Amen, amen. Prosta, where you at? I can't believe you're going to make me go after her. Listen, I don't even, I don't even, how, how about I ain't even had to say your name because, you know, we already knew who you were when I said Prosta. So, I just, I don't know what to do. What am I supposed to do? Introduce <laughs> yourself. <laughs> Great evening, everybody. <laughs> I pray that you are well tonight. This is Pastor Brandy L. Rojas of Matt's Life in Greensboro, North Carolina. 
and where I actually uh, co-pastor with my husband, Pastor Omar Rojas. Um, just honored to be on here tonight, honored to be um, connected to this awesome, awesome woman of God, this host, hostess with the Moses, as some would say, um, cliche-ish, but still, that's really who she is, um, truly a jack of all trades and anointed to do everything that God assigns our hands to. Um, I'm just honored to be on here with you guys tonight. Um, I do reside in Greensboro, North Carolina, and I am so, 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 so ready to see what we're going to talk about tonight. Yes, it's going to be double. All right, so Prophet Ebony, introduce yourself. Grace and peace, everyone. This is Prophet Ebony Gordon from New Haven, Connecticut. I am the executive pastor here with my husband, Apostle Denarian Gordon Sr., at Rim City Church. I'm super excited as well to be sharing on this platform with you amazing women of God, especially my sister, Prophet Shalanda Williams, Treasure Williams, glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. We thank God for what he's about to do. I know that every listener, every participant is going to be blessed regardless of the conversation because we know that it's inspired by God. Yes, 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 indeed, yes, indeed. Prophet Tanya Ratliff, please introduce yourself to the people. Kingdom blessings from Boot, Louisiana, crawfish, shrimp, and spicy gumbo. Les et les bon con roule, let the book good times roll. A lady to be here with everyone on tonight. I am Prophet Tanya B. Ratliff apostolic reformer, prophet, author, entrepreneur, currently serving as the overseer of the church without walls international with my spiritual son, Pastor Marlon Daniels, related to be here with my big sister in the gospel who shares the same birthday month with me. We are the mighty, mighty cancers, and I'm just elated uh, to be on the platform tonight and just wondering what I'm in store for. Yeah, you and stuff are so great. And not only do we share the same month, y'all, but we share the same day. I think that was the thing that really, really connected us. We was like, the first place we have the channel. I was like, yeah. So we, uh, we've we been kind of connected ever since. And so I am excited about it, uh, everybody. Uh, Coach Jean is still here, by the way. Coach Jean, say hey to the people. Hey. What's up, everybody? Hey. <laughs> You're still present. So, y'all, I say this 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 woman of God right here for last because she is actually the only one, I believe, who has not been on this platform with us at all at any time. Everybody else has been heard, whether in this season or last season on the show, um, but she has always had um, – something to do at this hour, and she's on California time, you guys. So being that she's on that time, when we're on at 10, she's still doing her day-to-day duties during the daytime. So she hasn't been able to make it. But I'm, like, super stoked right now, y'all. This is Prophetess Angela Williams from all the way in Cali. You feel me? She is, like, checking in from Cali right now. So Prophetess Angela Williams, please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Angela Williams of California, um, of 360 Church, uh, co-pastor with, along with um, some great other great people. And um, I am, when I got the news, um, I was so excited to know that I was going to be afforded and get the opportunity to be on a panel and platform with all the beautiful people that are here and that I've heard. And so I am so humble and grateful uh, to be on here tonight. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. Listen, all right, so, y'all, this is what we're going to do. And so um, – I know that there are some who may have to tap out, and that's cool because um, the fact that y'all are here with me at all is um, extremely wonderful. And, again, uh, for those of you who weren't on when I gave the reason why this was so special for me, because now I'm going to start, a, I think, a third Tuesday panel, um, and you guys will be the first panel that I've done. And we're starting this off in the new year, but it started because, Y'all know that I was still trying to get better. I'm still trying to feel better, still trying to get to 100%. And I wanted this show to be dope, but I needed the strength of of my sisters. And so I invited y'all here tonight because I still needed to be built up a little bit, right? Um, But y'all are going to be the start of uh, the third Tuesday panel. So congratulations, ladies, for 
<laughs> for, for being that. So this is what we're going to do tonight, and we're going to uh, – yeah, I, I want to make this so, this so interesting. I'm about to tap into some stuff that we may giggle about, some stuff that we may get real intense about. Um, but because we have so many on the line and I want to cover more than one question, we're going to be on like a minute and a half response time for, um, for each question because I want to hit um, as many of you ladies as possible. So it may be three on one question, maybe three on another. It may be, you know, um, however we decide to dissect that thing. Um, but the first thing I want to talk about tonight, and this question is going to be so out of the blue. I think the only person that might giggle at me right now is Apostle Marilyn. <laughs> but it's just about to be one of them out of the blue, let's break the ice type of questions. So we have, let me see, uh, Prophet Tanya, Prophet Ebony, Prophet Brandy, um, and Coach Jean. Y'all are the married ladies on the, on the line. So uh, me, uh, Apostle Marilyn, Prophetess Angela, uh, we kind of just waiting in the wings, just doing us, and, you know, waiting for God to do what he got to do, right? So I'll pose the question to Apostle Marilyn, and I'm going to pose it to all of y'all right quick because uh, even though you are married, people still have their preferences. And so I want to tap into what the preference is. <laughs> Don't start laughing. So I want to tap into this whole preference thing real quick. And y'all can take about – Maybe 30 seconds. Y'all don't even got to take a whole minute and a half. But I have a question about age and <laughs> relationship. <laughs> so that whole younger woman, older woman, younger man type of thing, we just going to come from that one perspective. Older, I'm here older. for it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm older, here for it. Older woman. Younger man, so that's your response. I'm here for it. That's, that's, that's Listen, I am, a, a, j- just so we're clear, let me identify myself. <laughs> I am a also Maryland East Porter, and I am here for the older woman, younger man. I don't ascribe to the concept of cougars because cougars, a cougar is an animal that prowls, right? Mm-hmm. So. I don't necessarily ascribe to I'm prowling for that, but I am 100% open to the notion that as a 50-year-old woman, I might need me a 35-year-old that can do some things that I can't necessarily do. So I'm here for it. (laughs) She's here for it. She is here for it. I already knew her answer, so now, (laughs) and I was ready to hear it. You know, and and she just woke all the way up. If y'all didn't notice that whole that whole it's my baby time because I'm fifty thing that just kind of went out the window as soon as I I said it. She spoke up. She spoke up. So uh, I'm gonna ask Prophetess Angela next because she's the other single lady on the line. And then I want I even want the married women to answer because uh, even before you guys were were married, or you may even be married to somebody younger right now. So let's just tap into that. So uh, Prophetess Angela. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, it just it depends on the maturation. Um, where I am right now, I um, it's a lot of things that I don't care to deal with with a younger younger man, and so um, with a maybe like a seven age difference, may, maybe, but it has to do with maturation and um. And where, where he's headed, and and just, it's, it's a lot of factors involved. But I'm not like all in with a with a younger man. So that's she's that's not right. all in. So we got a I'm all in. I'm for it. I'm here for it. And then we got a mm, yeah. I don't know. These jokes better not be bringing me no drama because uh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> this baby maybe if he ain't told if he didn't tell her his age until like way later and he was like really dope, then maybe it would work. But yeah, she ain't up for the drama. So she, um, but I, listen, so with that particular statement, Apostle Marilyn or some others oh. may assume that the older jokers are kind of bringing more drama yep. than the younger. Exactly. And, and that's exactly right. So so I guess, it's, like you said, it's a preference thing. And so maybe I'm, mm-mm, it just depends. He got to have his head on his shoulders. He got to be going somewhere. He got to love the Lord. He got to make sure that he got my back point blanket period. And we shouldn't be able to tell there's an age difference. So I'm pretty sure. 
Uh, right. And I, but I think all of those things go across the board. I don't care how old you are, that, you got to come with that. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I definitely get it. I, I'm, I'm, let me hear y'all marry ladies talk about it right quick because I have my thoughts. I don't want to interrupt you. Huh? <laughs> I'm okay, sorry. So this, is, this is Jean. It's Coach Jean. I can't help stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so for those who don't know, yes, I am married. I've been married. My husband and I reached our 21st anniversary uh, earlier this month. And um, this is actually my second marriage. My first marriage to my first husband was 12 years, but we married young. And he was only three years older than me. But I've always liked older men. My husband now is actually almost 10 years older than me. He turned 66 next month, and I've turned 57 this year. I prefer... I have always preferred older men, at least someone older than me. But my experience was even three years older than me was not older enough because at the time it didn't seem like that pe- the, the men around that between three and five years older than me were not settled. And um, now that my, hu- my husband, um, my current husband, again, we've been married 21 years, is almost a 10-year age difference. He, when I met him, very settled. He, I was think 36, and he was 40-something at the time. Very settled, was settled in his career. Uh, we're both military. He was settled in his career, settled finance. This settled all the way around, you know, would love God. And so for me, that has always been my preference. Um, and it has panned out for me um, very well, thank God, <laughs> in marriage. So. So, so at 47, she, she married, she was 36, her husband was 47, and at 47 he was settled. So needless to say, if a 50-year-old, 50-something-year-old decided to be with a 47-year-old, he may actually be settled and well, right, to be able to be with her. So I guess um, that could be actually be a factor too. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that hanging for a minute. Uh, Prophet Ebony. Hey there. Um, I believe that it depends on the age of the individual. As the ladies already have said, it depends on the preferences really based on the individual, what they actually desire for me. Um, I am two years older than my husband, so that's not really like a long, big stretch, but he was married already. So he married young as well. So this is his second marriage, my first. So I believe that, you know, a lot of wisdom came through that um, Mm -hmm. experience, what not to do. But um, I do have a couple of friends that have that age bracket where it's 10 years, 7 years, 8 years, and it really just depends on the person's upbringing, the level of wisdom, you know, that they've occurred and how they, you know, respond to, you know, different things. So some folks need that youthfulness, and then there's individuals that need, you know, uh, different stuff. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. I think it's cool. That's what's up. That's what's up. Preference thing. And then so, uh, Prophet Tanya, what you think? Um, I would definitely say older, uh, five to ten years both. My husband and myself uh, had prior marriages. And so uh, when we met, there is a five, uh, five-year five age differential. I'm 50 and uh, he's 55. I just like a man um, that's mature, uh, wisdom, and when I always think of somebody that I wanted to date, it was it, someone that always reminded me of the characteristics that my grandfather had. And so um, my husband was that uh, individual because I just found that um, younger guys that I dated or I attempted to talk to, the mindset and the maturity and the wisdom was was not there. Wow. I get it. I I feel y'all. I feel. I kind of feel y'all more than y'all know right now. So, Prosper, what's what's the word? I'm like this. Like I've actually I've dated men that are older, and my husband is actually um, he's eight months younger than me. So you know, when we met, he of course he got married. He was married early. He got married at 18 years old. His first marriage, he was 18. Um, my first marriage, I was 24. I got married the day after my 24th birthday. Um, so 
by the time we got together, by, you know, with everything we experienced, we just met. I mean, you know, unless I told you that there was an age differential, you wouldn't know. Um, I have a friend, um, actually, they're like a brother and sister to me. They've been married over 20 years. When they got married, she was 28 and he was 18. He had just graduated from high school. And they are still wow. together to this day. And they Hello. are an amazing power couple. <laughs> an amazing power couple. She was almost 30 years old. He was 18, fresh out of high school. An amazing right. power couple. You know, Miles and Tracy, amazing power couple. So, you know, for me, I'm like, you know, if my husband had been five years younger than me, I still would have married him. You know, eight years younger than me, I still would have married him. It wouldn't have made a difference. Um, he's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade up for anything. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be hundred percent honest, you know, just from this perspective, I have always been that that older, work better for me person too, right? I think the youngest person that, uh, like, when I was, like, super young, <laughs> I had a boyfriend that was, like, younger than me because he was so mature because his mom was sick. His dad was a pastor, so he could drive already because his mom literally was disabled. So they taught him how to drive at that age. He was playing uh, keyboard and just, just really doing his thing as a minister of music and everything at his age. And so we talked, um, but as an adult, uh, I'm an old soul, right? So because I'm an old soul, I feel that, and, 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 and okay, let me go ahead and factor this in. I am still in my 30s. I'm, not, I'm, I'm almost 40, but I'm not 40 yet. So being that I'm not 40 yet, if I date super younger than me, then I'm going to be dating somebody that's, you know, like still probably still trying to find their path and find their way, right, if it was a lot younger. Um, even when I was married to my ex-husband, he's only, I think, a year and a day older than me, and there's a huge difference in our personalities, um, a huge difference in uh, the way we see things, the way we see the world. Um, and that's no blow to nobody, you feel me? Because I think that anybody who has their way of being, it just is what it is. But on the flip side, people would look at the relationship that men had with me, and they would assume, oh, my God, like, what are you doing with this young girl? Like, oldest to me, because I think that um, yeah, I got to mute. Somebody got to mute themselves real quick. Um, but if uh, they were looking at the relationship between me and another and the guy, 14, 15 years was easy for me to do, you know, as far as the age difference between me and the guy. Um, because when I was, you know, 16, 17, even younger, when I got up to 20-something, 30-something-year-old wasn't too much. Also, you got to factor in or people factor in the fact that I am the youngest child out of all of my siblings, and between me and the next brother to me is seven years, seven years up to 16 years. And so all of my siblings, my brothers and sisters are like that age. You feel me? So for me, it was easy. It was like the normal thing to do. And anybody who was younger than me, it just felt like it was off. However, however. Um, when it comes to this thought process that we're in right now, and this is going to lead to a whole other discussion, but when it comes to this thought process right now, everybody's waiting for the promise of God, right? So we've got to talk about the promises of God, ladies, uh, ladies, but I'm going to start with this part. We're talking about the promises of God. We're talking about, you know, the things that we want from him, the things we desire from him, the things that God has told us belong to us. Um, there are a group of people who say, make this list, make this list detailed as possible right, and, and let God bring this list to you, yeah, so y'all get ready to talk about this list thing. So make this list and make it detailed as possible, whether it be your man, whether it be your business, whether it be your ministry, um, just give God as much detail and give him something to work with. He'll bring you exactly what you're asking for. And then you have a whole nother group of people that are saying, well, if I'm waiting for the promises of God, then how am I making the list, right? And so with that, can I really say as a single woman still for myself that if he sends me somebody that is younger um, than I am, mature enough, of course, because, yeah, I got six whole biological kids, plus I have my extra babies that's going to always be my babies, right? And so that in itself is a big deal. Um, also, there's just things, you know, the mantle that we carry. It's a whole lot of factors. So he automatically has to be mature enough to be able to carry some things and to uh, to deal with uh, the, the call of God on my life, right? So there's all these factors. Um, but if he is, do I say no 
because there's an age gap? Do I say no because he's 10 years younger than me? Do I say no because he's five years younger than me um, and, and because it wasn't on my list? So I want you guys, and, and that was that's my gist on it, and I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of putting myself in a place where I'm saying, okay, God, whatever you have for me, I want it, right? Um, and I just got to believe that the maturity level in this man, regardless of his age, is going to be what you know I can handle. Um, so that's my take on it. And uh, thank y'all ladies for y'all feedback. So now let's talk about this list, right? And let's talk about the promises of God. So if we're waiting on the promises of God, which all of us are, by the way, there are things that we know that God has promised, words that he has spoken that's been confirmed, uh, we done dreamt them, <laughs> all kind of things, right? So Prophet Tanya, I want you to share with me how do you feel about the promises of God, right? Do you write a list or do you not write a list? Do you just wait on whatever God brings or do you specify to God what you want? Um, well, last year, um, God blessed me with my dream home. And the dream home that he blessed me with was the home that I specifically asked him for in prayer because his word says in Psalms 37 and 4 that if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. And I believe in being specific, just like when I prayed for my husband, I prayed specifically for certain things that I needed. I need it because I knew where God was, was taking me in my walk with him, and I know that I needed a companion that would be able to handle the anointing and the all and the call that was on my life. So I do believe that we are to pray specifically because if we're not praying specifically, are we praying amidst? So we should know what we, what we desire. Okay. Amen. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, Prosta. Prosta. What up? Prosta. (laughs) (laughs) You got a list or you just, you know, you, did you say, okay, God, you know, I know what I desire and I, and I do put my desires before you at the same time, you know, what's best for me. So if you change it up, I'm good. If you don't, then I'm good. If you, you know, whatever. So how do you feel? Um, well, you know, I've actually, like, in the past, I've really done a little bit of both. Um, you know, of course, you know, we go into a back kick, we find where the scripture tells us to write the vision, make it plain, and all of that. And sometimes we use that as our uh, foundation for why we write it down and things of that nature. Um, but it was something that my husband actually preached this past weekend, and the title of it was called Let's Be Clear. You know, um, we can take time to write things down or even express it out of our mouths and still not be clear. Um, or there'd be a fear. And one thing that I found with me is that, you know, I wrote it down. Like every year I would sit down and write down what I was expecting from God for the next year. But when the next year came because of the warfare, it made me stop writing. Mm -hmm. Um, it, It made me pretty much like, well, maybe if I stop writing, maybe the warfare won't be as intense and I'll be okay to pursue it. Um, And so I've kind of been really honestly in both places. Um, Now, this year, I want to say, matter of fact, it was very recent that I sat down for this year and began to write down things for this year. Um, But I began to write it down from a different perspective of the fact that, you know, what I'm writing down, the enemy can't do anything about it to keep it from manifesting, period. And Mm -hmm. when when I wrote it down, I made that confession out of my mouth that whatever I write down, Whatever I speak out of my mouth, the enemy has no grounds to try to take it from me, rip it from me, get me not to believe it. God is going to do it. And so I really believe, like, you know, whether a person writes it or doesn't write it, sometimes can end up being a matter of faith. You know, if you experience warfare when you write it, then you're going to be less apt to write or sometimes even less apt to say. Um, But we have to know that God is above all of that and that we have the freedom to speak, the freedom to write and know that God is going to do it. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Prophet Angela, what about you? What do you think? In regards to a list? Do you do you think that we should, you know, when we when when we think about the promises of God, right? The things that God has promised us, um, because He's spoken things, you got in prophetic words since since I met you, right? So if you yeah. with the prophetic words he's already spoken over your life, um, and just with his promises, period. So when it comes to yourself, do you make a list 
Uh, do you believe that the list is necessary when you have the promises of God, or do you feel like lists are not necessary in your own life? Sometimes they are according to what God is releasing um, to you and through you, but as opposed to just making lists per se, um, that's not that's not my thing. You know, if only only the time when God releases something that that um that's at hand or even maybe futuristically, then I will. But um, as opposed to just making lists, I'm I'm not that list um uh, person. You know, and 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 at this stage um of my life, um my heart is really not focused or in tune to just like. Um, being, I, I want a husband, of course, but not so much as just um, trying to locate ages or locate, you know, uh, thinking about that per se in a man or whatnot. It's, it's really not focused that I'm, I'm keeping busy, but not so busy that I, I can't hear God and I can't be aware of what God is saying. So um, I believe the promises of God. It's, it's, it's my, that's my faith is in his promises. So I believe the promises. Um, I, I, I have history with God, so God knows my heart. He knows what I desire. And so I believe that when he does come forth, that he will be just that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think I, I think I definitely can vibe with that a little bit. I think I've been there a couple of times where I'm like, you know, you know all things. You know everything about me. And I think because um, definitely uh, when Prophet uh, Tanya talked about that, um, when you delight yourself in him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And I think I said it one time before here that that was a twofold thing for me, you know, that number one, he would place the desires in me, give me the desires of my heart. So if I say that, Father, I'm aligned with you, I want to be aligned with your will, um, excuse me, this is what I want, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done kind of situation, then I believe that as I delight myself in him, that it is his desire that I desire because he put it there. He gave it to me. Um, and then I also believe that then he will give it to me, manifest it for me, um, that which he placed. In other words, it won't feel like it's forced, right, because uh, it's his will. So uh, my, my will will end up lining up with his will, and then he will manifest that will. And I guess that's kind of uh, where I was on it as far as Liz and things like that were concerned. But um, I do believe uh, that – and I have – I've written Liz, y'all. If y'all see my journals, y'all would just be like, oh, my God, girl, really? Uh, yeah, <laughs> like I've written them. I, I've written Liz out uh, for ministry, for, for, for these businesses, for the mate, for all that stuff, um, because I just – I wanted to feel active. I wanted to feel like I was making some type of faith move. You know what I mean? Like, okay, God, I do believe it. I'm not going to live in my fear. I'm not going to be alone for the rest of my life because this, you know, the marriage didn't work out or whatever. I'm going to be out. Right. You feel me? So I'm going to write this list because, you know, that's my faith move. Um, so I guess, you know, either way, I guess one way or another, I don't think it's a, a, a foul or not. I just, you know, it is a preference just like almost anything else that we're discussing here tonight. So, Coach Dean, what do you think about it? Well, you know, Prophet, as being in the military, <laughs> it, it just depends what it is. Now, you know, when I had divorced my ex-husband and, you know, dating was not a thing for me. I had been married 12 years, could not date, didn't like the dating scene, and that's when I began to pray and ask God more specific regarding my future husband. Didn't write a list per se, but had a mental list, if you get what I'm saying, of the qualifications mm -hmm. I wanted of my future husband. And and that's exactly what God gave me to, and exactly to the T. That's what God gave me. <laughs> now, when it comes to business and anything else, you know, business, my military career, anything else, I have to make lists of specific things. Um, I, I, I guess, and I think a lot of that had to do with me constantly multitasking you know, and having mm -hmm. five and six different major missions going on at the same time that helped me to, you know, keep, you know, keep going and keep in mind what I had to get done. But that's only when it comes to business. With ministry, no, I've come a long way in the last 18, 19 months to where I'm learning to allow God to just, I'm going with God's flow. I'm learning to flow more, and I'm really thanking God for that. Uh, so that, that's, that's where I am um, right now, where I've been and where I am, depending on 
what it is that um, what the mission is and what needs to get done and what I'm believing God for. Dependent on the mission. Amen. 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 Got the M-E. Listen, so you a coach of, uh, a coach of all trades. That's what I'm going to call you, a coach of all trades. Instead of... <laughs> and so I know that with that, you know, there comes some checking off some stuff, some things. And so what do you think about the promises of God versus, you know, along with us creating the list or writing the details out or whatever the case might be? What's your thoughts? So, um I can pretty much um, I can pretty much agree with everything that's already been said. For me personally, um, I don't have a list, but I don't have a list um, that I have generated myself. But what for me, um, my request to God is, you know, I got two ex-husbands, right? So <laughs> I ain't real good at this thing, Jesus. I'm going to need you. I'm going to need you to really check my heart and bring forth the brother that's going to keep me in check all the way. That's, what, that, that's, what, that's my prayer. Right. Right. And I absolutely get that. I think, and I'm laughing because I think that's really where I am with it. You feel me? Like, you know, God, I just thought I kind of, you know, mm-hmm. when, I put, when I put down the desires of, of my heart outside of your, you know, your will, without me asking you to bring my will, my desires into alignment with your will, then I'm, I'm pretty much, you know, because, you know, yeah. the nurturer in me, the nurturer in me um, automatically kind of <laughs> searches out the jokers that need me to, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, and so I'm at this place in my life right now, and this, this even in ministry, like the people that I cover, the people that I'm, I'm connected with, business and stuff, I'm still a nurturer by nature. You know what I mean? So automatically that's what I'm attuned to, to, to having people that I have to nurture or love to life. And all the time my love ain't taken the way, you know, some people may feel like it's supposed right. to, you know. So uh, when I think I'm doing the right thing or I think I'm, I'm giving more mm-hmm. love, it don't really come across that way. So now I'm saying, God, I probably just ain't getting this right. I think that also leads to what I said about the age and just all this other stuff. Um, you know, I've dated the older guys. They were trifling too, some of them. Not everybody, mm-hmm. but everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> everybody. But, you know, I, I, I've dated some close to my age. We were compatible, but there were some things that were off. Um, I've done business. I've done marketing where I thought that, you know, I'm on track. Even after prayer, y'all, y'all hear me? Even after being in prayer and fasting and all this stuff and asking God for, for you know what I mean, for clarity, thought you had it. And then, you know what I mean? So then I kind of got to this place where I'm like, Lord, maybe I just, because it, it makes you want to sit in the corner and be like, you know what, I ain't even going to move from this place right here. I'm just going to wait until you just, like, bring it right in my vision because obviously I just don't have it all together. Prophet Ebony, where you at? What you think about this whole thing? Prophetess Ebony, you talking because if you mute it, I can't hear you. Sorry about that. Um, I personally um, don't have a list, and I definitely agree with every single thing that was said regarding it. Um, What I do believe is that if God has, well, you said the initial statement was that if God has made you a promise, um, do you need to make the list, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that you should make a list based on the promises that God gave. I mean, I know I'm getting older and wow. I'm not that old, but sometimes you forget. <laughs> right, 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 right. But um, at the end of the day, no, I don't, I mean, I don't, you know, particularly have, you know, a list. And I wanted to say something, like, on a different level of the reason why, you know, prior to really knowing, you know, the ways of God, I just felt undeserving to even think about trying to write anything. So um, I think that it, it kind of crippled a lot of stuff because, like, one of the women of God has said, uh, just, you know, thinking about the warfare of something, not, you know, wanting to even attract anything or get, have it snatched or whatever the case is. So I think it's just kind of like two sides to um, doing it. But for me, I just – basically go with the flow um, of what he said, and, you know, um, sometimes I just think that's just a better way. 
Amen. I feel you. I, I, I when listening to um, Prophet Tanya, and I was like, you know what? That confidence, that that confidence, that faith, that boldness is amazing. And um, and when you know that you know that you know, um, it it, it, it it takes on a whole new uh, appearance. Um, so there's a boldness that comes along with that. I remember when she told me that that, that she finally got this house, and I was like. Now what you say? Because I promise, you know, it was one of this this past season period. This year, last year, for me, it's been like up to five, six years or something like that. It's just been but just crazy. So everybody who was getting what God was promising and showing them or things they put their requests out there for, I was celebrating with them because it, it's been a tough time. It's been a tough season. Um, and so I just. I think I, I, I kind of I understand every perspective on that. Let me tell y'all what we're going to do. So I know that some of y'all, if y'all are going to uh, to drop off, just shoot me a, a, an inbox real quick. Let me know that y'all got to doze off or y'all done took y'all, uh, y'all start to throw um, an older people joke out there. <laughs> but I'm sorry. Y'all done took y'all medicines or something and you just got to doze off. And it's all good. I understand. I understand. I understand. And if it's cool, you can inbox me. But I have got to play my um, host pick of the week, and I want us to take this break. And as a matter of fact, this song right here um, by Brian Wright, which is uh, my spiritual mom's actual birth son, and he wrote a song and he performed a song and he recorded a song. And so I want to play it here uh, tonight on this platform. And after we come back from this particular song, ladies, get your thoughts and your mind ready because um, those that are going to remain, because I want you to actually, um, I'm going to give you, each of you that are left, I'm going to give you uh, a question or a topic, and I just want you to give your particular thought on that particular question. So y'all get ready for it. Y'all, now we're about to have our host pick of the week. Um, and get ready to enjoy this and then definitely go and look for it after we play it here on Inspirational Treasure on the radio. All right, you're going to give me a few seconds, Shalonda. You cue it back up, okay? So, you got anything I will else to say? Real- I will indeed. Prophet Tanya, before you do have to say good night, I want you to greet the people one more time. Give them a word of encouragement real quick that's going to help them to be able to uh, to just go throughout the rest of this week, if you will. I just want to encourage someone that's listening on tonight that if you've been through any type of struggle, adversity, or affliction, the Word of God tells us in Psalms, 102 verse 13, that God will arise and have mercy on Zion, for now is the mm-hmm. set time to favor her. And I believe with all of my heart, as God has spoken, those that have been faithful, that have been obedient, that have walked according to God's will, I do know that this is the hour of restoration and this is the hour of favor, and this is also the hour that we will see the manifestation of those things that God has promised to us in this hour. We will just continue to hold fast the profession about the confession of our faith without wavering or doubting. Amen. Amen. Tell the people where they can find you and how they can keep up with you. Uh, I am on all social media platforms. I'm on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, um, not on Snapchat. Uh, You can also find me on uh, my newly released podcast, uh, which is entitled Coffee Mm -hmm. Talks Empowerment Podcast. That's on every Monday. So I want you guys to check me out. We are on nine uh, different platforms. So I want you guys to check me out and um, give me some feedback, whether critical, whatever. I'm just doing all that I can to uh, build the kingdom for the cause of Christ. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, sis. All right. You guys be blessed. Have an awesome night. Night, night. Y'all get ready. Get ready for the host pick of the night. I think we ready, Jerry. We ready? Deliverer, you are my 
I'm walking in victory. That was Brian K. Wright, uh, the son of Apostle Norma Gray, and he is on uh, your music platforms. Wherever you go and purchase your music from, please go support that and, and, and put it on your playlist um, because just to have that um, reminder that you're free, how amazing is that? And so that was our whole speak of the week. Um, the nice business flash, y'all. I uh, I was thinking, I was like, you know what, Lord, I do definitely want to always promote other people, but I do get the question often, 
um, about myself. And then um, when I'm here on this platform, I don't really actually promote, I guess, the way that most people would with a platform such as this. And so um, there is a book right now that is the number one Amazon bestseller, and it won't show attention. So I'm going to need you all to go to my website, which is theinspirationaltreasure.com, and I want you to see that awesome, phenomenal cover on the, uh, on the front page of that website, and I want you to click whether you want an autograph copy or whether or not you want to just go straight to Amazon and order it on Kindle or um, order the paperback. But it just needs your attention. Um, if you have not heard, it is no, I'm not okay. Don't forget the three W's. Excuse me while I unmask, and that is the book of yours truly. Um, and for those of you who have not even heard about it, you haven't seen um, any of our uh, book tour stops, you haven't heard any of the messages that go along with it, I would encourage you to go and do a search real quick and begin to see the people that have been impacted by it already, um, the places that it's going, the people that um, whose eyes is catching, because not only is it a book that speaks about unmasking, it's not just for people who want to look at some, you know, some juicy gossip, but it's for those who want to be free to take their mask off and breathe again. And so I want you all to check it out. Go to theinspirationaltreasure.com, click on the autograph copy, or click on it, uh, the option to go straight to Amazon and get the book for yourself. But that's our business last of the week. It's me. It's me, you guys. It's me. Uh, so make sure y'all take advantage of that. Um, but for the remaining of our time, I want to talk to my sisters again. Hey, sisters, y'all still present? Hey. Yeah. Well, I love it. I love y'all so much. I just thought I'd let each each and every one of you know individually and otherwise that y'all are like the bomb dot com to me personally and um I'm encouraged to have you all as a part of my life. And so one of the things that I want to ask and I'm gonna ask each individual a question and then once you answer your question, you can go ahead and give the people your credentials. All right, I hope that makes sense. So once you answer this particular question, because it's going to wrap us up, and I know y'all all preachers, because I'm a preacher too, uh, <laughs> um, but I definitely want to get the gist of what's on your heart. So this question that I'm asking, it really is not about me or any question that I'm posing to you, but I want you to tell me what's center stage on your mind right now. And so when I ask you that question, you give your take on it, you give me your thoughts on what's on your mind right now, what you want to tell the people, and then give them your credentials, um, if you will. So Apostle Marilyn, I'm going to come for you first, because I'm so very just, just happy that you decided to, you know, take this time with me, you know. <laughs> so uh, what what is on my mind, what is center stage on my mind right now is um, definitely it is time for the kingdom to um, really get in the game in the marketplace and dominate. Um, mm-hmm. That That's really where, where my mind and my heart is right now because I don't believe that with all of the wealth and with all of the riches and with all of the money that is at our fingertips, that the people of God should be in immense struggle, that churches should be shutting down because they've been burning mortgage, the same mortgage for 100 years, and the pastor can't get to work because the car breaking. Like there's so many things that are going on in the kingdom, and that money could just answer. And I love favor. I love favor, but an abundance to be able to do for yourself, for not just your family, but every family that you're connected to and to support your church and um, and to be in a place of business where people not only come and get a service or a product, but they also get Jesus. So where mm-hmm. I'm at right now, center stage for me, kingdom millionaire sync up. I know that I know that God is calling on the hearts of his people to stand up and take their rightful place in the marketplace and the marketplace means money. God just listen, there's nothing attractive about poor the world. There's nothing attractive about poor. And so I believe that in this very hour that God is tugging on the hearts of his people to stand up Take what's in your hands, do something with it, and let's dominate this marketplace. We are supposed to be 
on top. We are supposed to be. He gave dominion to the kingdom, not just to, to just random people, but to mm-hmm. kingdom people. So we got, it's time for us to take dominion. So I am Dr. Marilyn E. Porter, the founder and senior spiritual leader of the King Pool Pit Crusade International, the uh, CEO of SBG Media Group, and the founder of the newly established Kingdom Sync Up, Kingdom Millionaire Sync Up um, yes. movement. And um, you can catch me on social media all across the board at Marilyn E. Porter. My website also, Marilyn E. Porter. I promise you that if you trust God in this season, if you trust him like you've never trusted him before, I promise you he's going to show you something that you've never seen before. Absolutely. 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 So Kingdom Millionaires Think Up, y'all, that's literally, that's literally a hashtag. The shirt's coming out, all type of stuff, because it is real live business. I, I've been present even now when um, she's getting this word spoken into her life um, just just on a broadcast, a live broadcast, and, and I, I've heard it, but I felt it. I saw it years ago, and so I'm excited. And, and not only that, but those that are Kingdom Millionaires, it's been spoken over your lives. God is just doing something. This is the hour where that thing is, is, is stirring and brewing. And so amen and dominate, you guys. It doesn't mean be selfish. It doesn't mean, you know, be to the point where you mean and wicked because that contradicts the character of a believer. Mm-hmm. But it means we should not have to walk in this, this place where we are the ones that are the borrowers when we're supposed to be the lenders. Amen. Hey, hey, man. Coach G, what's on your mind? Yes, ma'am. Well, Look, here's the deal. God has, um, he said he wished above all things that we prosper and be in health, even Mm -hmm. as our soul prospers. And I, I tell you, my heart is grieved because more and more, I'm hearing of more and more of the people of God, um, sick and not well and, you know, things of this nature. And so, yes, there are things that come, you know, I mean, as long as we live, we live in a world and because, you know, sin entered the world, you know, disease and sickness has come upon, you know, the world. But this is the year, and I believe this down in my spirit, 2020, this is the year to where we have got to become focused and more intentional when it comes to our health and our well-being. There is too much work to be done in the kingdom of God, and each and every one of us has been spared for a reason. We are still here living and breathing because there is still purpose in us. And the bottom line is, we cannot be effective for the kingdom of God if we are not strong and healthy in our bodies. So let's be focused. Let's be intentional. Everything God, and particularly when it comes to our wellness, let's be focused. Let's be intentional. Choose your heart, okay? Because a lot of people want to say, well, this is hard. It's hard to do this. It's hard to do that. Well, you know, being sick is hard. Health care uh-huh. is hard. So <laughs> let's be focused. Let's be intentional. Choose your heart. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Y'all bet. Listen, geez, that's crazy. It just hit me real hard with that one. She said, choose your heart. Being sick is hard. Oh, you ain't never lied. You ain't never Go ahead and give me your credentials one more time. Oh, amen. I forgot about that. You know, I like talking about myself. And so, you know, I am Jean Turner. I am a registered nurse and a certified health coach. I'm also known as Lieutenant Colonel because I'm still active duty Army and soon to be ordained minister as of March 1st, God willing. Get it. Get it. So she got a lot going on. And then uh, don't forget to check out Spirit of the Warrior, the book. It is 
live um, on Amazon. Also, you can just, just, just grab it. The story behind what this woman has to say, she is not just talking about health, but she is living it. I mean, literally, y'all. Literally, um, for those of y'all who are here with me right now, y'all don't know the voice of that woman. That's the woman that we testified about um, of some some months ago that literally went into cardiac arrest, that literally left this earth, and we were in our, you know, we was in such deep prayer. It was crazy, and look what God, look what God has done. So y'all, this this she ain't just talking about it; she being about it, and so um, I'm excited about that. Amen and amen. Prophetess Angela. Yes, ma'am. What's on your mind, um, Besides coming down here and taking me to get some snow crap, you know. <laughs> I mean, <yeah. laughs> and my um, watermelon, you know. You know. What I'm saying? That's right. That's right. You know it. You know, answer, sir. Answer, sir. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, oh. What's on my mind? Um, it's for my mission. Actually, is that people will know God and that they will find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Like, that's my mission, and it's something that I do every day um, um, in the in where God has me. And so that's, that's really what's on my mind. And to partner with people um, that want to build the kingdom, you know, um, we sometimes our perspective gets in the way of building um, because um, we won't to be recognized as whatever we want to be recognized as. And that, um, even though when I started out, I was like, you know, I, because I was getting my bearings on what this thing looked like, and so I kind of gravitated to that a little bit. But once I studied the life of Christ, it, it changed everything uh, for me. And it's really about us partnering and going, um, as uh, – um, Ms. Jean said, um, it's really about us partnering with those that are doing things and making it big. We can make it global. We can make it international. We can make it anything that we want to make it, but we have to partner mm. with each other, and we have to set aside, like, attitudes and set aside, like, egos and all of these kind of things. And that comes with some teaching because sometimes we've been in environments that uh that that's what breathes there the ego the um the oh I'm 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 the one or whatever and so we have to be taught and educated um in in a practical way so we can gravitate to the learning and that's just uh, my mission you can find me on Facebook only I am a full time uh, pastor um and ordained counselor uh, on staff at three sixty church. <laughs> At 360 Church in, uh, what is that, Stock, is it in Stockton or where is it? Stockton, in California. California, yes. In Stockton, California. <laughs> yes. <laughs> y'all, this, I think y'all heard me testify about Providence Angela before. This is the woman of God. Uh, for those of y'all, I, I, well, I know at least everybody that's on this line right now have has heard of her or heard me mention her, but she's the one, y'all, who was, like, literally – um, one day she was on the phone with me, and she was like, Prophet, she was like, if people down there that are supposed to be doing this, 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 and this for you, and they are not on their post, and I feel like, and so she she literally, y'all, from California was armor-bearing in the spirit realm, real talk, and, like, it felt like she was really present because um, it's just certain things she would not let get through, and so she's been definitely been a blessing to me and um, continues daily to, to, to try her best to be, even with everything she has going on. So I'm excited to have her um, as a part of my life. Thank you for joining us for the first time. Yes, it was such an honor to be among such greatness on tonight, uh, Dr. Um, uh, Marilyn, uh, uh, Pastor Jean, uh, uh, Prosper Brandy, as you say, uh, uh, Prophet uh, Ebony, uh, Prophet um, Tanya. It was such an honor, and of course, you to be among that. I that God counted me worthy to be among such greatness tonight. So I'm so humbly uh, honored by this. Oh, and we humbled and honored to have you here. Amen, amen. Pro- uh, Prophet Ebony, listen. She is. This is. This is her. Her. Her statement of choice. I definitely ain't out of word, but I'm out of time. So what I know is she can. Um, 
she can drop us some loads and she can like have you sitting here on the edge of your seat like okay what's next what's next what's next what's next and she can she can really spit out the things that she know that God is talking dealing or whatever the case might be and so uh, Prophet Ebony. I'm not going to say your question is a little bit different because it's not. I do want to know what's on your mind, but I also want to know from your lips what's on the heart of God right now concerning the people uh, and what word do you have for uh, the people that are listening. Hey, man, bless Jesus to you, sis. I'm sitting here like, are you kidding? Sis, you're going to do that to me tonight? I wanted to answer like everybody else. But... um, (laughs) Um, but basically, um, what God's been speaking to me is um, just the uh, this is the hour really of obedience. And the thing is that God is speaking to so many people in regards to partnership, um, support, and all those things. But there are some individuals that are on the back scenes that are getting um, in the ears of individuals that supposed to be assigned to on. the assignment. If that makes any sense. So. Um, and so there's a lot of um, distractions or a lot of things that are coming up that's causing people not to obey God, which is causing a delay in the assignment or a delay in the manifestation of the promises of God. So um, I've really been just praying um, for the level of faith in the hearts of people because they're putting their things ahead of God, and God has stopped be- stop being their Jehovah Jireh. Their jobs have become their Jehovah Jireh or their providers. Um, the baby daddy's been their providers or the baby mama's been their providers or the people down the street's been the provider. God has stopped being the provider. So I believe that um, church-wise or in, in the house of God that he's repositioning. He's re- repositioning people um, that really have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. And as the woman of God said, God is definitely monopolizing some things um, in the marketplace so that the kingdom of God could be advanced. It could be funded. And when I tell you that it's really happening, it's about you casting your net on the other side. You can't keep on connecting to the same individuals, the same networks, the same people, sharing the same vision, sharing the same dream to folks that can't interpret it. So um, that's what's really been on my heart is that God is resetting us so that we don't keep on getting blindsided by folks that make promises when they don't have the money, when they get the money, the mind change. But he's really positioning us to um, be connected to people that you don't have to beg and ask. They already know what it is. They already know the principles. Mm -hmm. And there are not people that are religious. These are individuals that know the principles of tithing. They know the principles Mm -hmm. of of sowing, but they might cuss a little Uh, bit. They might drink a little bit. The Bible says to listen to yourself, friends of unrighteous men, because he knew that the people in the church were going to get Mm -hmm. shady. He knew the people in the church was going to get shaky. And honestly, um, is what someone else said earlier, and I apologize that I didn't remember the name, but um, when you, you know, come to the house of God, people just got a different mindset and a different mentality. So for me, I just really believe on my heart, is because I know so many powerful women of God that really desire to do major things that have been struggling to really bring it to pass because of people's disobedience and what God has said. God told us that give 100, you're going to give $8 because you feel like, you know, you want to go out to eat the next day or you want to go do this and you want to do that. And you don't realize that you offset the plan of God and brings frustration to his purpose. So, you know. I'm not out of word, but. (laughs) 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 Let me tell y'all how um, Pastor Brandy going to be real mad at me right now. But listen, so, (laughs) listen, so, oh, God, I could just, if they had a virtual shoe right now, it's thrown. You just got hit right in the top of the forehead. (laughs) Because, like, Oh my God! Like we've been talking about this. A friend of a friend of my, uh, apostle friend of mine, he posted um, something on my wall the other day, and he is, you know, what many may call a judgment prophet in a sense or apostle, and he um, he hears from God from the people who God has been warning for a very long time. <laughs> and now God ain't wanting you no more, and he's coming kind of coming for you. And so he was talking about this this thing about the heart of the of the, the um, perverted apostles and prophets who are speaking 
um, about money and stuff like that and tithing and stuff like that for selfish gain, right? Mm -hmm. We were having a whole conversation about this, um, and and I, of course, had to give my two cents, and I said, you know, I get get it. I get it that he's speaking from the perspective of those who have, you know, been doing it for all the wrong reasons, but the heart of the matter is everything to God. So there have been those of us who have been literally, I mean, almost crawling, almost crawling to get to our positions in God, to maintain, to stand, keep going, to keep pushing. Um, and people looking at us as if we're liars and, oh, God is not going to do this and God is not going to do that. And, and, we're, and we're saying, no, we know the principles work. This ain't about us not practicing our principles. I would, <laughs> so it has to be somewhere that, that this thing has been held up. And God spoke to me last year uh, when we started um, 2019 and was talking about this very thing, about how there are people who are withholding their hand. And God is saying do one thing, but you're rationalizing what God is saying because it don't make sense or um, I've done this True. or I've, I've done that. And would God really tell me to do that? And the truth of the matter is, is that when you have an assignment, the Bible talks about those that have the gift of giving, like, and that's some of us. That that's who we're going to be too. But there are some people who have literally been assigned to fund ministries to literally make sure that the men and women of God have no worries. Because guess what? The CEOs of the the marketplace companies ain't got no worries. The people, mm-hmm. who, you know, who are um, cooking at the restaurants and stuff, they ain't got no worries. But we in the kingdom suffer because people want to be disobedient. And so while me and him was talking, I told him the same thing, just, you know, because I, I, I know God told me to teach about money and the principles. And y'all know me. All of y'all on here. Y'all know me really well. So I don't even talk. I don't like to talk about money, but I'll give it. I'll give it. I'll give a seed. <laughs> <laughs> I listen, I don't have a seed sometimes and I try to figure out how I'm gonna make one. So I will give it all out and I don't necessarily like to talk about it, but what are we gonna do? This is this is this is the fact that she brought it up, y'all it just got me hyped because y'all are holding up the progress. Like seriously speaking. And that's and it's not that God can't he can't come snatch it from you. There are warring angels that will come and snatch it right up out of you and you ain't gonna like it. But why he gotta do that in the kingdom? Why did he have to do that in the kingdom? So now those that Prophet Tanya, I mean Prophet um, Ebony, just talked about when she said, "Look, they they know the principles, but they might be cursing. They know the principles, but they might not feel mm-hmm. like it. And they're giving money to the kingdom because they, first of all, they are appreciative of the word of God. That's number one because they already feel like they are not worthy sometimes. And so when you bring them something that's giving them life, they're appreciative. They ain't got no problem with pouring out. But we old children who just chilling and we just think we got it like that, don't want to pour out what God is saying. Thus, the the, the, the manifestation of what we've been waiting for is being held up because you want to be set. Y'all, you know what? Cross the way you at because, you know, yeah. Yeah. Y'all, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Where you at, um, uh, uh, Brandy? <laughs> <laughs> I've been set up. All right, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not even go You've been set up because, 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 yeah, you've been set up, I, and I did it on purpose. I know, don't beat me though, and 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 let that virtual shoe you just threw, let that be for profit, and not for me. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, like you know, I <laughs> I had to uh, to minister this past Sunday. We actually we had a conversation. Um, my husband and I, and we were just kind of like, you know, what really describes where we are right now? Um, and, and the word that God gave us was the word reinvent, right? So, you know, so, you know, the way we are, here we go. You know, we start making, like, you know, graphics and stuff like that and start trying to figure out, you know, let's make a shirt, let's do this, let's do that, you know. But in the midst of all of that, you know, you also have to look at what reinvent is. And so, um, this past Sunday, I had to minister about the word reinvent, and what it says is it says to change something so much that it appears to be entirely new. And, you know, the thing about it is like when we, especially when we walk into a new year or a new situation, you know, it's, it's one of those things where sometimes you have to like make it be new, um, so to speak. Um, I actually had a vision on New, new Year's Eve um, where I saw these two huge massive hands pick up Matt's life and hold it in midair. Mm-hmm. And didn't he? And I, and I see all this dirt flying off of it, roots coming off of it, and he never showed me where he put it. 
you know. Mm. Um, it, it wasn't until um, I actually went to a leadership recognition and one of the recipients um, opened his mouth and began to talk about Elijah and how the um, how the ant's head fell, you know, fell through, went into the water and, and popped back up and all these different things. And he began to summarize the story. And what he said was, he said, for those of you who through your act said, it seems like your act said, your ideas, your dreams, your wishes, your desires, um, the thing that God called you to do, even your work unto him, it feels like it's been thrown into the river and landed in the mud. And he said, but God is raising you up out of that muddy place, and he's lifting you, and he's causing you to float in midair. You know, mm. and, and when I begin to think about that and begin to think about reinvent, you know, God will put you in, in a place. He will sit you in a place. Um, or he'll allow you to be in a position that leads you directly back to him, you know, and when we go through these things, we don't feel like God is doing something brand new. We don't necessarily know that he's doing something brand new. You know, um, it hurts. It doesn't feel good all the time. Um, and so we never consider the fact that he's trying to get something out of us, but when he produces it out of us, then we understand, oh, that's what that hurt was about. And so, you know, one of the things, one of the places that I went was the man they had the four men um, um, lure him into the into the house so that he could move the feet of Jesus. And and one of the things that God showed me was that you know what, when you are being reinvented and when God is reinventing you, you have to be willing to be let down. Ooh. You have to be willing to be let down. Um, you know, and, and the thing about for some of us is let down, like it could be your friends that let you down. It could be an enemy that lets you down. Um, but, you know, regardless of who lets you down, you end up at the feet of Jesus. You know, only oh Jesus God. can reinvent us. Only God can reinvent us, you know. And so he has allowed us to be in a place and allowed us to be in a space right now where um, he has us like in an incubator, if I can put it that way. He has us incubated. Um, and he has us in a place, and for those of you who know what incubation is, um, you know, and I mean really know what incubation is, that means that everybody can't feed you, everybody can't see you, everybody can't talk to you, everybody can't come visit you, um, everybody Ooh. can't have access to you, and that's where he has us right now. Um, and, and it's funny because it's almost like a thing where it's like you should be wanting to tell everybody and invite everybody, but everybody's not equipped to handle a reinvention. You know, anytime something is being um, excavated, anytime something is being demolished, anytime something is being um, is, is being rebuilt, there's caution tape all around. People have to be um, equipped uh, with the right headgear and things like that to even be in the presence of such um, of such um, processes, so to speak. And if everybody's not equally equipped, then it causes the um, it causes the people that's actually building to potentially get in trouble. You know, because wow. it runs against their licensure. And so, you know, a lot of times we want people that we want people to come see our reinvent, but they ain't got no headgear on. Jesus. We want people to come see our, you know, our reinvent, but they don't have the breastplate, uh, breastplate of righteousness on. We want people to come see our reinvent, but they can't even mentally nor spiritually in that moment understand where God has us. And if they saw what God was doing, they would probably go ahead and just say, you know what, just go ahead and die. You know, and, and so God sure. has us in, in, in a place that has us in a space right now where only those that have the right headgear can come in my atmosphere right now. You know, yes, he has, he's had me in a space for the last few months where I can't even go on Facebook Live. And every time I tried, I would get nervous like I've never been on Facebook Live a day in my life, you know. But he said, I had to bring, I had to put you in that place. He said, because everybody right now in that moment can't have access to you because I have you in an incubator state. And if people that are contaminated get to you, they will cause you to get sick. Ooh, so he had to know Jesus. who to allow me to be around in that season, you know. So as, as you go through this season, as people, you know, continue on this road of, of, of New Year's resolutions and all these other things, you know, just keep in mind that everybody's not going to be celebrating you while you go through this place. It's going to be people that are going to mm-hmm. celebrate you that you know and people that you've never met that are going to celebrate you. You know, when people let you down, be okay with that because God just wants you at his feet. <laughs> you know, Jesus. and if it takes a letdown for him to get you there, then he will allow that letdown to happen to get you where he needs you to be so that in the end, at the end of the day, when it all comes out in the wash, you will look back and say, I know it was God. Your enemies will look back and say, I know it was God. The witches will look and they'll say, I know it was God. The warlocks will look and say, I know it was God. The saints will look and say, I know it was God. The friends will look and say, I know it was God. Because... <laughs> Because our God does mm-hmm. just that. Our God does mm-hmm. just that. So um, that's where I am. That's what's going on. 
Um, again, my name is Pastor Brandy Rojas, Matt's Life, the Matt's Life Church, Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and IG. And on Twitter, uh, it's Matt's Life DFG, the same on Instagram as well, and also All Things Diamond Fire. My God. <laughs> Oh Jesus! Okay, so there's something else, y'all. Listen, so y'all do realize how everything just thinks all together, right? So we talked about kingdom millionaires thinking up. Uh, we talked about partnerships and partnering with people to advance the kingdom. So many different capacities. Talking about your health, right? We can't be um, unhealthy. Don't throw no daggers. We can't we can't be unhealthy and actually just do what we gotta do for the kingdom. Talking about uh what God is seeing and and, and and man this whole funding the kingdom thing and then now we're talking about um uh, uh when Pastor Brandy started talking about reset and reinventing um and the things that she mentioned. Y'all this is all it all comes together. Amen. It all comes together. When it all it all falls down. Right? When it all falls down, we, first of all, we can't do it without each other. Um, when we try to make it to where we can do it and handle things on our own, we defeat the whole purpose of being here on the earth. Though we have the Father, though we have the Holy Spirit, though we have our Christ, uh, to follow his example and in and, and, and him saving our lives on the cross, though we have them. There, there, there's been many points throughout the scriptures where they point to our relationships with other people. One of the things that I want people to understand is that, and I, and I said this, and, um, and, and Coach Jean said, she was like, man, that part right there really hit me. Um, you could be somebody's manifestation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Your fee, your money, your 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 car, your home, your uh your mm-hmm. clothes, your thing. It should be the very manifestation of what right. people are waiting for to reinvent, right? right? To, right. To, to to take over the marketplace. To, to, I mean, to take over marketplace to um to get healthy. Mm-hmm. What is the information of what you have? Uh, um, the thing yeah. that you're holding. That's the very thing that's going to help them. What if the money that you do so into their ministry or into them as an individual? Because I told you guys and told um, the people who followed the ministry a while ago that God is not only putting ha- uh, money in the hands of the actual ministry itself, but God is having people to walk up to the actual actual vessel and putting money in their hands and saying, thank mm-hmm. you for your sacrifice. Because the years that you sweated, the years that you cried, that nobody did nothing at all. Here, God wants to bless you. And what is that money that you put in their hand is the money that's going to take to help them to get well? What if these things are, you know, what if you're the prayer warrior that's supposed to be um, 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 online? Man, do you know what it feels like for all of, when y'all pop up one by one sometimes when I'm on live and I know I'm drained and I don't really have much energy to push forward, but God says go and I got you. And then so when he says I got you, he sends reinforcement. Guess what? Sometimes he can grab me and embrace me, but most of the time, he sends other people, those that I can trust, that's going to go me up. What if you are somebody else's manifestation? What if you are the one that, ha- that holds the key? Why are you sitting up here trying to guess or, oh, well, I think I'm going to hold it for my family or, oh, I think I'm going to do this and make sure that my grandkids got it and God told you to release it because he already got your grandkids set up, but you hold it because it's about you. So we got to be very mindful in this time. Uh, Pastor Brandy just said, and y'all, for those of y'all who don't know why I call her Prosta, it's because she's a prophet and a pastor, and I just put it all, all together and, you know, to kind of not have to call her both. So uh, Prosta said, she said, every, listen, people can't, everybody can't go onto a property because they don't have the right headgear. That was profound because Prophetess Ebony just said what she said, and she said that, There are people in the background talking in the ears of others that are supposed to be partnering up, like Prophetess Angela said, and they are not doing it because of what's been spoken in their ears. Y'all know who Professor X is? Mm -hmm. You ever seen X-Men and you know that because he, he sees, he has this guard over him when he's trying to see. And when you're trying to see, sometimes you got to have your head covered. And sometimes your head got to be covered so that people cannot hear or be in your ear 
So they can't come into where you are because they don't have the proper headgear because knowing that if they come in there without the proper headgear, the enemy is going to be talking in their ear, and then they're going to talk to your ear, and they're going to try to abort the process. Man, I'm telling you all, this is such a powerful time in the body. And if we're not aware of what we are taking in or who is with us, listen, I promise you the discernment is on an all-time high right now, an all-time high. If you just pay attention, trying the spirit by the spirit, we're doing it more and more and more now because people are tired of getting bitten and people are tired of being hurt. So I want y'all to take every word that y'all receive from these awesome ladies, these awesome women of God tonight, and I want you to take them and take into understand, just understand them. Don't try to break it down. Don't try to scrutinize it. Don't try to, because you, it, huh, just because you don't have a lot of money don't mean you got to try to tear down the wall of the word about prosperity. Just because you don't see the manifestation of whatever it is you want right now don't mean you got to tear down kingdom um, millionaires think up. Just because you don't, you in a place right now where you feel hopeless and you feel like everything is just all messed up around you don't mean you got to tear down the word of reinvention or of partnership because you've been burnt by other women and men in ministry. Fix your mindset. We're here tonight to help you fix your mindset. Be ready for everything that God has for you. Be ready for the promises of God. Write down whatever it is that he tells you to. Let him bring to you what it is that you need for this season of your life and be equipped and be ready to receive him in his fullness. Y'all, this has been Inspirational Treasure on the radio. Ladies, say good night to the people. Good night, good night, and many blessings. Good night. We love y'all so very much. Amen. We love y'all so very much. Y'all join us back here next Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern time until midnight. Uh, and just get ready for whatever it is that God has for you here on this platform. We love you, and we'll talk to you again soon.